Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. As you can see, this is NodeCraft. I'm Jeff Yenzer, and I will be your host for the evening, for good or for ill. We'd like to thank those of you who definitely brought children, and please understand that this will remain family friendly. I promise to put on a filter. Moving forward, and for those of us in chat, we would like to tell you a little bit about who we are and where we've come from. But first, I do want to tell you, the motto of Nodecraft will always be, be kind to one another. That means, moving forward, keep things constructive. Whether you ascribe to the Tao of Bill and Ted and you say, be excellent to each other, or maybe Will Wheaton's motto that we won't speak in mixed company, it all comes down to just being kind to one another. A little bit about us at Nodecraft. We're an Oklahoma-based startup. We started here, we remain here. Oklahoma's a big part of this burgeoning world that we kind of see, I believe they call it the Silicon Prairie. Well, we figured we'd get in on it too. Nodecraft was started in 2012 in May, so for those of you keeping track, that's nearly five years of being around. So these guys know what they're doing because they've done it for a while. In that time, they've become one of the top five Minecraft hosts, and that's no small task. They've done that by creating a custom-built architecture, which allows them to build things out as they need, not rely on any sort of templates or other people's input. They can address their customer issues as they come up and take care of any of those issues with mechanics that they know and understand instinctly. Also, there is a mobile app. We do have parents in the audience, and we would like you to know that due to that, it does make things a lot easier for you to be able to keep things in control. Little kids, we don't want you to be controlled all the time, but mom and dad do kind of like to have some sort of idea of what you're doing, and Nodecraft wants to make sure that that's a possibility. Basically, when it comes down to it, we want to give you the best experience we can as you host or you're hosted on private servers. There's an active in-game community, and when we talk about community, we don't just speak to the people that say that there's a part of the community. We know that it's not just people, ones and zeros on the internet, but it's also going out there, seeing people, shaking hands. Nodecraft themselves have been found at Minecon in 2015, and again, here in Oklahoma City at Super Bitcon in 2016, and again, appearing this year in 2017. Those of you that are local, we would love to see you out there. Come to the booth, come say hi, shake hands, because at the end of the day, we remain in Oklahoma because we feel that this place and its people are at the core of our values. Giving you a little bit more information on that community in and of itself is one of our co-founders, James. James? Thanks, Jeff. So the gaming community, um, more precisely the Minecraft community in general, is what we owe a lot of our success to. And we do that in a lot of number, a different number of ways. We partner with a lot of content creators which work on both YouTube and Twitch. Uh, some of these, just to give a few shout outs to people like Keyhan, who work closely with people like Sandy and Craner, which some of you may have heard of. Um, people like Ammunition and Theliacraft, which play Minecraft and a lot of people will watch them on Twitch play this game and they will kind of talk about our service as well as just kind of enjoy the game and let everyone enjoy it with them and watch them play. We have then also partnered with a large number of modded gaming communities, specifically in Minecraft here. A few examples being the AT Launcher, which is a Minecraft launcher, which essentially lets people create their own kind of modifications of Minecraft and all play together in a seamless and simple way. Uh, another one of these is Pixelmon, which allows people to play with Pokemon in Minecraft, which is, is very fun for a lot of people because it kind of combines the two communities and the experience. Another one is MC Edit, which is another Minecraft-based tool which lets you edit and explore your worlds outside of the game. And then a, another community called Resonant Rise, which also work with mod packs. They have their own kind of huge gaming community, and they just kind of love playing games, and are we going to help them with that? So. And then, uh, for those partners I spoke about, specifically the 18 Launcher and Pixelmon, we spent the time with them to develop a content delivery network, which we call NodeCDM. And what this allows is for people all over the globe 
to download thousands of files every single day, about eight terabytes of files a day, actually. And it lets them connect to the servers nearest to them so they get the best connection, the best speeds, and everything like that. So it just, again, creates the best, most seamless experience. Some of these graphs here will show some of the amount of traffic that we did last year, which uh, was in total about three petabytes of downloads. And this service is offered entirely for free to these partners, and we don't charge a penny. And just for a comparison's sake, a lot of this would, with an another provider would end up costing about $50,000, $60,000 a year. So now I'm just going to hand back to Jeff to just carry on talking about what's next. So you might be asking, just like James said, what's next? We've done Minecraft, so maybe we build it out a bit because if there's one thing everybody wants, it's always more games, right? So in keeping with that, we want to be able to offer you something new, something different, something expansive. But remember, we're not leaving Minecraft in the dust. So keep this in mind as we bring on another one of our co-founders, John, to tell you more about what's coming up and why you're here. Thanks, Jeff. And real quick before we move on, I want to quickly acknowledge the fact that uh, we're very aware of that coming soon line. And that's about to change. Like, it's, it's been there for too long. So um, today we're introducing Node Panel 2, which is just a second iteration of our product. Um, I'm going to wait until the light's over here. And so what I'm showing you now is our live beta you can have access to today by going to nodepanel.net and signing up. We'll be sending out invites shortly. Uh, but some of the biggest changes we have for Node Panel 2 uh, isn't just more games. There's plenty of communities out there that are already today offer you know, hundreds of games. And the real problem you run into is the fact that you're purchasing one subscription per game. And that's not really sustainable when it comes to how many games you have in your Steam library. I mean, like if you're like me, I have more than I can play in a given year. And uh, we felt like that was unsustainable. So we moved towards a model which we're calling uh, instancing, which is effectively a set of save states like you might have with uh, your uh, console, for example, you just, you know, make a save and you can go back to it any given time and, you know, you can make a new one or switch in and out. And the reality is that's going to be uh, different per game and lets you save those any time. So t in talking about games, uh, so today we're already going to be offering Minecraft. Our second game with this beta is going to include Starbound, which is a good uh, next sidestep. Uh, and the next thing you'll notice is instead of a big giant coming soon, we're going to let Valve keep that one. We've got dates here, which basically lets you know when we're actually going to start supporting these games um, and getting an actual schedule in place so there's no question. The next thing you're going to notice is that we have a couple different status indications on each game, which is really important. Um, supporting a game is, is a different uh, and difficult uh, problem you might have to uh, tackle. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things. For Minecraft alone, there's a hundred different mods we support, uh, mod packs, excuse me, that we support, and thousands of mods run in the first place, and that's a lot of uh, problems we have to deal with. So, uh, for each game, that would be just impossible to launch. It would take literally a year almost per game in certain situations. So, we created a new system, which we're calling uh, Early Access, which is basically a uh, dumbed-down version of each game, so we can launch it in Early Access, and then move into a full release. So for example, you see Minecraft has mods, plugins, mod packs versus Starbound is just, you're gonna get in and be able to play Starbound. So let's start looking at one of these inst instances here. Let's create one, just do a regular Minecraft instance here. So the uh, create process has changed quite a bit. It's a little easier to use. And you can actually start off by selecting which type of server you wanna run before you even get into the control panel. Uh, let's just do regular Minecraft for now. And just for a second, that's how many mod packs we support today. And <laughs> that's something that we've uh, been uh, pretty much uh, working on at nodecraft.com and have been doing with the last few years, but that's an astounding list of incredible mod packs you can play. But let's keep it simple. Let's go with regular Minecraft. So after you've created your instance, you can pretty much deploy it to a live server um, and you'll have more of these coming and going. We can even go ahead and create a, like a Starbound instance.
And uh, you see, there's no mod packs for Starbound. This is one of those things, again, with early access, it's just the base game. We can go ahead and create that. So we've made instances, you know, which is, is neat, but let's actually get this deployed to a server. So let's go ahead and start with Starbound. I mean, that's, you know, the basic thing you might uh, want to see is what's actually new. Uh, so we've got two different services. So instances are your games, your save files, versus a service is a paid subscription you have and uh, something you'd have to uh, keep up and maintain. Uh, but really all it is is just you pay for a service, you get access to your instances. Looks like we're in the wrong location. Let's switch that from Atlanta to Chicago. Run deploy. Give it a second. Beta, you know how it goes, right? Let's try that again. Well, let's switch over to something that might uh, have a little better chance here. All right, so uh, we'll come back to Starbound in here just a few minutes. So this is the new Minecraft uh, control panel and node panel. Um, and so a couple things have changed. It's not just a new dark reskin, but there's a lot of new optimizations you're going to find. Uh, you know, your basic, you know, overview, but you're going to have a new and updated console. For our current customers, you might have been used to the console kind of lagging your computer up. We spent quite a few months, actually, uh, modifying this and making this uh, run significantly faster. Are pretty much guaranteed not to run into any issues, but everything here is pretty much the same. Uh, we have a new players tab, if I can click, which is, helps you manage your uh, admins, your whitelist and bans. You can actually even ban by IP at this point, uh, just some basic features. Uh, and one of the other big uh, things we're really proud of is the new file manager. Let's go ahead and kick the server off while we're waiting. The file manager has also been completely rewritten. Uh, from the ground up to be significantly faster. Uh, with our old one, we found a lot of issues where it was just really slow. So now you're actually connecting directly to the node itself. And uh, the speed difference is quite astounding. So I could actually give you uh, just, it's almost like you're on a, a, a file system at this point. There's a lot of new other new features in here that you can actually get direct access to. We're not gonna go over those today. Uh, you can uh, play with those in the beta, but it's just something that we'd like to cover briefly. You've got your typical backups. Not much is really new here. Uh, a few uh, new skins. We're hoping to have some support for things like Dropbox or Google Drive in the future where you can actually store your own backups uh, on your own system so you don't have to worry about downloading those yourself, but we're getting to that. Uh, another overhauled part of Node Panel 2 is going to be our automated tasks. We heard a lot of complaints about people that wanted to set up some basic, basic tasks and they couldn't chain them very efficiently. So let's go ahead and create a task real quick. We can do a scheduled task running on certain days. We can do a task that runs every set amount of time. And of course, your typical web hooks or hooks in general, you know, when a player joins kind of things. So, uh, but the new change really lets us do a couple of things. You can actually have multiple dates. So, you know, at different times. So instead of just one date, it can be at midnight and let's add another one here at, let's say here. So midnight and at 12 PM. You can have it run multiple tasks. So you can actually do things like servers restarting and then uh, wait, make it wait for like a period of five minutes or so. So uh, which helps you kind of chain and create these tasks instead of having to time them at like uh, 11.50, say something, 11.55, do something. You can just create one task and uh, let it carry from there. Otherwise, you have your basic game settings. Not much is here is new and different. Uh, you'll find it specific to each game. Uh, you have your one-click installer, of course. Tell it. Okay. Which again is just more mod packs, and you know, just like before, you can still switch within Minecraft. It's not like you have to create a new instance. You can actually just switch your mod pack. Nothing else is different there. 
Uh, I think the last more exciting change for Minecraft is going to be our Java settings. You can actually change which version of Java you're running, uh, Java 7 or 8. You can set your performance profile. We have a default or a high performance, which is just going to change your startup arguments in Java. Not exciting for most people, but for anybody that's running a bigger Minecraft server, you're going to find a lot of uh, flexibility there. Well, that's just about it that's new within the panel. Like for Minecraft itself, uh, we can go ahead and try last one more time on Starbound and uh, maybe we need to make a beta patch, but uh, we'll see. One-handed typing is not. Let's try this. All right, we've created the new instance. It's got a new service. Well, it looks like we've actually filled a few of our beta uh, instances out by uh, people registering. So we're gonna go ahead and try to swap out. So if we go back to that Minecraft instance, let's go ahead and archive that, which means it's gonna go ahead and back up all those files we had. It's going to make it available for later and we can redeploy it but um, let's try to get that uh, Starbound server put up. So it's now archived, we don't have to do anything with it. We can go ahead and try to deploy again. Oh, cool, we're in Starbound now. And so the first step it's gonna do uh, is start downloading the files um, for you. And uh, we've had some issues where the downloads have been a little bit slow. So we'll cut back to this here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, this actually is something you're going to see anytime anybody starts making changes in the file. So previously, if you had a friend of yours helping you, you would, uh, and he installed a new mod pack or a new uh, file chain, uh, you wouldn't see the change. You would just, you know, it would happen in the background and you had no idea. So you're actually now getting a live broadcast uh, to all users of what's happening. So while we're waiting on that, um, we can go ahead and open up to a live Q&A. Uh, if we can turn the lights back on, please. All right, the people that are here will start to answer your questions first, and then we'll move on to those questions produced in the Twitch channel. So anyone that happens to have a question, feel free to just raise your hand, and I will address you as such. We even have giveaways for those of you that happen to have a question, so you'll get your swag, I promise. I might even throw it at you. I left the uh, t-shirt launcher at home, so I might have to just chuck it. Okay, his question was that you would be able to create the two Minecraft servers and then switch back and forth as you want? Yes, and so uh, it's going to save all of your files. So it, it makes a backup automatically for you and you'll be able to swap back and forth. So you don't have to have two payments, uh, two, two paid subscriptions, just one subscription, pop back and forth. So for example, if you've been running a mod pack for a long time and there's a new update to Minecraft, you might want to check it out and you don't want to lose all your files and to download them and go through all that nitty gritty, you can just archive it and then deploy a new Minecraft server. You can go back to it whenever you like. What size shirt do you wear? We'll get the, oh. we'll get you uh, taken care of after the show. You get a shirt and other people get a shirt and I'm gonna be Oprah, so who else has a and a question? I'm gonna actually come back to you and we'll hear yours live. Here's, uh, so my question is, is with the uh, new automation, is it possible to automate updates so that as they're pushed out, that it rerolls the instance with the new Minecraft or Starbound version? Who wants to answer that? James? So that's definitely something that we would like to do in the future. Um, currently, the automated task system has no access to your files. We are definitely planning to have the ability to create an auto-update system. With Minecraft especially, that is very difficult to do because when a mod pack updates, there's no real agreed-upon change log or guarantees of what's changed here and there. 
every author decides to do it differently. So it's very difficult to us to actually make that possible. But for games like um, Steam games, like Starbound, Terraria, all these other games, we definitely plan on having the ability to at least have a one-click update button and eventually alert the user to when you know, there's been an update and they should update their server for sure. And what size shirt did you wear? One X, saved and noted. We have one in the back. Is there anything set up for potential um, users to submit suggestions for future game expansions that you guys might not have on your current list? Which one of you wants that one? All right, here you go, John. So uh, for launch, we've got a set list of games we're wanting to hit, and a lot of those are basically your uh, voxel or your creative games where you can make your own uh, universes less about the shooter games. Uh, but we hope to very soon have a platform for people to actually uh, create suggestions and vote on them, actually have a tiered set of uh, games that the community wants to see. Sure size. All right, one for you. Anyone else with a question here in this audience? All right, we have some from the chat. John, would you like to read them out? Or I will. Hey, this is like I'm interviewing you. All right, let's see. Will the external backup system be compatible with most cloud storage services? Examples are OneDrive, Mega, et cetera. So um, basically, yes. Eventually, we'd like, we're planning to have the ability to have users specify their own storage mechanisms, whether that be via Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, their own S3 storage. Uh, right now, it's all being stored via just our own S3 storage, but that is definitely coming and something that we are going to allow users to very much configure. All right. Let's see, we have another. Is there a way to assign multi-tiered authority to users under a subscription? Examples, if a streamer wants a mod to help control a server without full control on the account. So um, with the current beta, we've actually got that feature removed uh, just so we can test some of the uh, scaling mechanisms in place for dealing with new games. But uh, much like Nodecraft.com and our current infrastructure running Minecraft, we absolutely have a uh, set of uh, permissions. You can uh, show if they want to have access to your files, your console, or even uh, giving them full access to the server depending on your situation. So definitely it is coming. I actually have a personal question, and this is for the few and far between the console gamers out there. Uh, do you guys look at possibly being able to expand this in the future toward consoles? So um, this is kind of one of those weird situations where we kind of fell into Minecraft. And, you know, Minecraft is getting bigger than PC gaming ever thought it would be um, on, like, literally mobile devices at this point. Uh, but uh, we have no real reason to be stuck to PC. Uh, we are always going to be expanding where there are players that want their own servers and can run their own servers. Uh, but we're actually hoping we can get to a situation where uh, game developers can uh, put themselves in a place that it's profitable to do so. That's one of the projects we're going to be working on very soon. So hopefully, but, you know, we'll see. I like that. We'll see. Uh, will the newly supported games be accessible via FTP like Man Minecraft is now? Yep, absolutely. Um, every game that we deploy in our system will be accessed via FTP, of course, as we all, always have offered on Nocraft.com on and our production system right now. Um, we're also planning to support some new protocols, including FTPS as well as SFTP, which is a much more secure and actually a faster way of transferring files. So absolutely, yes. Here's another. When would we be looking at an official release of Node Panel 2? Sometime within this year? Someone's being clever. <laughs> so um, that's a good question. Uh, a lot of the things we want to, a lot of the questions we have really come down to uh, how does a game like Starbound or Ark Survival, uh, how do we make that a good experience for the user? And, you know, we spent years working on Minecraft and we got Minecraft itself down to a situation where we're pretty much a guarantee of 
a faster renewal lag. Um, so we've really got to answer those questions before we're going to be able to start taking money. And that's kind of one of the things that we uh, feel as a company is important. Uh, we can't just take your money and say, well, whatever. It's got to be a, a worthwhile experience. Um, but optimistically, we're hoping for two to three months and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Also, thank you for these questions. These are amazing questions, uh, all of our uh, stream viewers out there. We do. We've got the chat hopping. Uh, let's see. Here was one that uh, Insanity's Hard asked, uh, but it's really for those of us that are watching those giveaways. Uh, they want to know, are they international or American only? They're international, yes. <laughs> That's why I gave it to you, you see? Yeah, I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing. You go to the source. Uh, let's see. Will server owners be able to create a custom panel for loading screens for Steam games? Or is that something they have to do themselves? Um, that's actually something we haven't thought about, to be honest with you. Um, we are definitely thinking about allowing fast download servers, so the ability to sync files from your server to a web server. Um, loading screens is definitely interesting, so possibly, maybe, we'll see. Another one, will there be an API to Node Panel 2 for streamers to run tasks remotely? So uh, for the, our developers out there, um, we actually built Node Panel 2 entirely on a OAuth REST API. And so we're actually dogfooding that on our own website. And basically, as soon as we get documentation in place, um, and probably this launched uh, is the realistic two goals. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we had a question in, in which codes is the new system developed? So our, our new system is built entirely in JavaScript from the back end to the front end. Uh, the back end is obviously using Node.js. And then our front end makes heavy use of uh, a, a web server in Node called Express, and then the front end itself is all powered by AngularJS. We use a few other technologies, such as InfernoJS for virtual DOM on our console, but it's all JavaScript based. And if you want to talk more about uh, uh, any kind of our technologies, please join our Discord. We'd love to chat with you about it there. But uh, um, what's the next question? Due to the new node panel update, will the prices of servers increase when it is implemented? So, uh, good question. Um, I, we, we, we never want to increase prices um, on our customers. It's just one of those things that's hard to uh, ask in the first place. Uh, when you buy a game, like I said earlier, it's like 10 bucks or so on Steam, then you have to spend 20 bucks a month on uh, the subscription. That's kind of a big ask. So uh, we've actually found a way of reducing price for a lot of our customers. And a lot of that kind of uh, depends on uh, your needs, but uh, we'll release more information on that soon. But, you know, the TLDR, no. Will there be dedicated server offerings in the future? I know that there used to be on the current node panel, though they were a bit more expensive than they were worth. So that is definitely something that we're looking to explore in the future. Um, an example would be the ability to get your own dedicated server and partition it into your own resources and then run everything via node panel. Um, it's something we would definitely like to do, but it's probably going to be quite a way off at this point. Will there be a beta on the mobile app? Possibly. <laughs> Um, we definitely are planning to update our mobile app. We've learned a lot since we developed our last mobile app. Our last mobile app was, to be completely honest, a very rushed development cycle. Um, it hasn't got very many updates to it, and uh, we apologize for that. But we definitely plan on updating our mobile app with a lot of these new technologies and making it a lot more performant, so possibly soon. Not during the beta. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's another one. Will Node Panel 2 be allowing for custom startup scripts for Minecraft servers? So um, while you don't have the ability to set your own custom startup scripts, you have the access to all of the uh, startup arguments. And I don't know if I'm just mishearing, um, but you'll be able to set like your different uh, 
arguments like uh, garbage collection, uh, but there isn't like a shell script or anything you might want to run, you know, copy files. There's none of that. You might look at a script if that's what you're looking for, but uh, I think you're talking about command line arguments, and yes, you do. All right, we had one person. I'll do a solid for them because uh, their stream cut out, but they just wanted a quick breakdown on those expanding regions very quickly. So um, as John said, we launched a new region in Asia Pacific in Singapore late last week. Uh, we currently have locations in Amsterdam, in Atlanta, Chicago, and Phoenix. Um, those are currently our primary locations. We definitely would like to expand in the future, um, looking at a potential Dallas location, a potential UK location. But uh, currently, we are working on more games prior to these locations. All right. And uh, does Nodecraft have a user authentication server for Minecraft players? Um, no, that's not something we're really looking into. Um, Mojang runs the authentication servers, and yeah, that's it really. Let's see, we have someone asking formally, how do I join your Discord? Would one of you like to uh, throw that information out for the entire chat to see? Um, we haven't actually got the Discord link anywhere on our website yet. Um, we will be throwing a link out on Twitter and our website very soon, but... Um, a link should appear in the Twitch chat, hopefully, in the next few minutes, and you can just click that and go through and join. Um, th the link, when we do put it on the website, will be on the community tab. So look out for that. Let's see. Will the mobile version of Nodecraft be updated to Node Panel 2? So, I mean, this is kind of a, a two-parter of the question before. Uh, so during the beta, no, uh, but it will definitely be updated We'll use it again soon. <laughs> yeah, I think we have to pay uh, Valve every time we say it's coming soon, so let's keep that, let's keep that to a low. <laughs> uh, let's see, we have a question that says, why do you think Amsterdam is so important for Nodecraft? I live there, that's why the question is being asked. The primary reason that we chose Amsterdam for our European location is that it's a really nice center of Europe for our primary customer, customer base, which are English-speaking customers, of course. And being in Amsterdam, that provides great connectivity for all the surrounding countries. So you've got France, you've got Germany, you've then got the UK, of course, and then you've got the southern countries, you've got Turkey and those kind of places. But it's just a nice central European location to help our European customers. All right, I have a question here. Yeah, where there will be a limit on the subscriptions, the amount that you can have based on your subscription for the instances? Who wants that one? All right, here you go, John. Uh, good question. So um, by default, any user, when you register, you have two free instances. Um, and we're working on figuring out uh, when you might be uh, able to keep those past the subscription. So just because you're paying, your instance doesn't have to not pay anymore doesn't mean your instance is gonna go away. Uh, but as you pay for more subscriptions, you will get more instances and have more storage. Uh, it's basically gonna operate on how our current website works where it's backups, just backup space. The more services you have, the more backup space you have. On the topic of money, we have a question in here. So stupid, stupid question, there aren't any, but will the node panel two be available for standalone purchase or license purchase, similar to the MCMY admin or SMTH like that, or something like that? I know what this stuff means. No. <laughs> um, it's one of those things that uh, we find really difficult. I know there's a lot of server owners out there that uh, definitely don't want to pay the premium that we have to charge uh, to you know, pay support staff and uh, to handle all the infrastructure we put in place. Uh, but it's really difficult for us to kind of compete with ourselves when we do that. Uh, we're uh, entertaining the idea of letting you bring your own server uh, and you still use nodecraft.com as your uh, base of operations, but uh, it's not something that we're able to say anything really yes or no on yet. Will there be a way of automatically starting the server once it stops? Perhaps an event trigger in the task schedule could handle it. 
Yes, absolutely. So the event trigger here, as John's about to demonstrate, you can do all kinds of things. So you can, for example, on the server stops, you could send a webhook to your own server to do something that you'd like, or you can simply just start the server again. But our event system is very extensible, so pretty much any event that happens on the server, you can trigger any other event. And of course, you can chain those as well. So for example, you could, on the server stop, you could wait 15 minutes and then start it up again to allow players time. I think we have one more from the chat. Will Nodecraft 2 have hub support so that I can link multiple server worlds for Minecraft? Definitely, yes. So um, right now we do support hub servers on our current production system, um, generally via the use of something called Bungie Cord, which is software for Minecraft. But we do plan to make it a lot easier to run in NodePanel v2 and provide some config options for it. But absolutely, there is no reason it won't work, and it will work very well. All right, last question here. All right, it better be good. You're the last one, Highlander. Well, uh, you're uh, trolling through the automated tasks raised a question for me. You said that in the as soon as it's out of beta that you'll be opening up the API. Will you have the option that, uh, like when the server crashes, you can have it call out to your own server so that you can then do things through the API if you just don't want something as simple as just reboot it? All right, which one of you am I giving this mic to for the final answer to the final question? So yes, absolutely. Uh, as you can see here, we have, already implemented, we have already implemented the ability to send webhooks to your own server on any kind of event. So for example, on the server stop, you can send a webhook to your own server and you can intercept that as a developer and do whatever you like from you know, sending out emails to your server admins to say, hey, the server stopped or whatever you choose to do. So absolutely, yes. And you can, of course, chain the events as well. So you can do both a webhook and then restart the server or whatever else you choose. Going to give you back your magical device. Thank you all for the questions here. We'll make sure that you get proper swag. And I'll give this over to John for a little bit more information. All right. So uh, the last uh, thing I want to kind of cover real quick. So we got Starbound finally installed. That took a little longer than we had anticipated. Uh, but you see it's quite different from uh, the way Minecraft worked. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of options. It's really like you can start your server. Maybe not. <laughs> We're having issues with Starbound, obviously. Um, so let's see. Oh, it didn't even uh, install correctly. That's cool. We'll check that out. So um, we will be providing beta access pretty much uh, to a limited set of users, uh, basically as we scale up more servers. But uh, we'll be giving that to you probably starting tomorrow morning. Uh, but you can start signing up today, creating your instances, and. Uh, uh, start referring your friends and we'll get you invited right along. So uh, thank you everybody for coming out. We're going to be hanging out, finishing off the pizza that's here. And if you ha have more questions or want to nerd out with us on uh, the technical part, uh, we'd love to uh, take your questions. Yes, like John said, thank you everyone that's here. Everyone in the chat, you do still have time to sign up for those wonderful giveaways that end at midnight. So kick that off. And for those of you that are staying around here, we do have signups here in the event space. So we're looking forward to having you stick around, answer questions, and anyone on the chat, keep things in your sights for tomorrow. So we'll start rolling things out. Go over to nodecraft.com. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us and thank you all for joining us. And I hope that this was informative and hey, let's get fired up and start creating some things, shall we? Thank you.